I often use these outline animations in my videos and in this video I'll share with you how we can create them in DaVinci Resolve using anim curves. While the anim curves modifier is incredibly powerful, creating in and out animations with it can be a bit tricky. And hopefully this video will inspire you on using anim curves for your animations. First let's get started in the edit page by creating a fusion composition. Simply right click in the media pool, select new fusion composition, give it a name and drag it onto your timeline. From there we'll start building our animation step by step. After we make sure the playhead is on the fusion composition we want to edit, we can now switch to the fusion tab. I'll start by adding a background note. To do this, I'll press shift space to bring up the note search menu, type in background and once the correct note is highlighted, I'll hit enter to add it to the fusion canvas. Next, I'll connect the background note to the media note so we have a visible output. To make things clearer, I'll change the color of the background to red. This way we can easily see what we're working with as we build the outline. To create the box outline, we'll need to add a rectangle mask to the background node. If the background node is selected, when you add the rectangle node, it will automatically connect to the mask input of the background node, which saves us a step. To keep things clean and organized, I'll also rename this rectangle node. You can rename any node using the inspector panel by right-clicking on the node's name and choosing Rename from the pop-up menu. Let's call this rectangle node border box for clarity. I'll press 1 on the keyboard so that the rectangle is shown on the top preview on the left. To create an outline, I'll turn off the solid checkbox in the rectangle node. Then I'll adjust the border width to define the thickness of the outline. Now we are left with a clean box outline, colored based on the settings from the background node. Perfect. The goal is to animate the length property from 0 to 1 when it gets shown and then animate it back to 0 when we reach the end of the clip. But before we start to do any animation, let's set up some useful variables we can use later. I'll add them as controls to the current rectangle node. To add a control, we can right click on the title in the inspector panel and choose edit controls which brings up the Edit Controls dialog where we can add the controls. The first variable or the control I'm going to add will be the NM duration, which we can set the in and out animation duration in seconds. I prefer the controls to be in the Controls tab in the Inspector panel, and this control does not need to be animated. After we assign it the slider control, we can press OK to have it added to the inspector panel. Excellent! I'm going to repeat the same steps to add a couple of more variables. First, a variable to hold the frame rate of the timeline. We will need this to do calculations for the in and out frames of the animation. Next, the frame total. This will hold the total number of frames of the fusion composition we are working in. Let's continue with the NM frame count. Based on the frame rate and our animation duration, we can calculate how much frames will be required for the in and out animation. And finally, the NM frame out, which will contain the frame number where the out animation will need to start. Excellent! Now that we have our variables defined, time to have them calculated using expressions. To add an expression to an animated control, we can right click on the control name and then choose expression. For the frame rate, we can query the pref property of the composition object in Fusion. I'll copy the expression in the text box and as you can see, the value is set to 60, which is indeed the frame rate of this timeline. By the way, I'll put a link in the description to all the formulas used. For the frame total, we can just use the comp.renderEnd property, which returns the last frame of the composition. 
the anim frame count will contain the number of frames needed for the animation based on the anim duration which is entered in seconds. So let's set the anim duration to 1 second and enter the formula frame rate times the anim duration which as expected gives us 60. Our in animation will run from frame 0 to frame 60. The out animation will also be 60 frames but it will run on the last 60 frames of the composition. In the anim frame out control we want to set the frame where the out animation should start from which is basically the total frames we have in the composition minus the animation duration in frames. As you can see the out animation will start on frame 239. To summarize, we are going to have an in animation from 0 to 60 and an out animation from 239 to 299. To control these two animations, I'm going to need two more variables or controls. Let's first add the animate in control. This animate in control will drive the length of the rectangle so let me add an expression to the length control to make it equal to the animate in control. When we manually change the animate in control, the length of the rectangle automatically gets updated with the value from animate in. Perfect. We can now add an anim curve to this value to automatically update this control. But before doing that, as mentioned, we also need a control for the out animation. So let me also add that before adding the anim curve. Now comes the fun part. I'll start with the animate in control and modify this with the anim curve modifier. When a modifier is added to a node, the modifier tab will be enabled and as we can see the anim curve modifier is now available for us. The anim curve modifier allows us to automatically adjust a value based on the duration of the composition. When I preview the composition, you'll notice that the length of the box gradually increases from the beginning to the end. By default, the anim curve modifier will stretch the animation across the entire duration of the composition. However, for our in animation, we want the length of the box or the value of the length to reach one in just one second. To achieve this we need to adjust the time scale of the modifier. Essentially we're telling the animation to speed up or slow down so that the value transitions from 0 to 1 within our desired time frame, which in this case is 1. To calculate the time scale we can divide the total number of frames in the composition by the frame rate and then divide this result with the animation duration. This calculation gives us a value of roughly 5, meaning the animation will play back 5 times faster. Since the original clip was 5 seconds long, speeding it up by a factor of 5 ensures the animation completes in 1 second, which was the value we had set in our anim duration control. If we check the preview now, we'll see that the animation of the length stops at frame 60. Let's quickly test if our calculation works as expected. If I go to the Tools tab and set the animation duration to 2 seconds, the in animation stops at frame 120, which is precisely 2 seconds into the timeline. And if we shorten the animation duration, it automatically adjusts the playback speed to match the new duration. Pretty cool. In a sense, I could have done this with an expression. However, the cool part of using the anim curve modifier is that we can easily adjust the easing methods. In the modifier, we can change the in and out easing and Resolve will take care of the rest. Let's set the animation duration back to 1 and continue setting up the out animation by adding an anim curve modifier to the animate out control. We now have two modifiers in the modifier tab. As the duration of the out animation is going to be the same as the in animation, the timescale we applied to the in animation modifier 
can also be applied to the out animation. So I'll copy the value and paste it to the out animation modifier. Now if we go back to the tools tab and scrub the timeline, you'll notice how the animate control values updates as we move. You might be wondering why it doesn't sync perfectly with the animate in value. And the reason for that is easing. The in modifier has easing applied, while the out modifier is set to linear, meaning it changes at a constant rate without any acceleration or deceleration. This difference in behavior is what causing the values to appear out of sync. The in and out values play at the same time, whereas we want the out value to start at the frame we calculated earlier in the nm frame out variable. To achieve that, we need to delay the animation of the animate out control. This can be done by using the time offset control in the modifier. Just like the time scale, the time offset value is a ratio where 1 means the end of the clip. As we already know which frame the out animation will start, we can calculate the ratio very easily by dividing the starting frame for the out animation with the total frame count. I'm also adding a minus 1 to make sure that it starts one frame earlier. Let's go back to the tools tab and see how this works out. As I scrub through the timeline, you'll notice that the animate out value stays zero until frame 239, and only then it starts increasing to one. This is because frame 239 is the starting point for the out animation we calculated earlier. Essentially, with the change in the time offset, we're making sure the animation kicks in at this specific frame. Now that we got that fixed, one thing left to do, and that is to update the length expression to use the animate in and animate out values. As this is going to be a long expression, let me switch to an external editor. Here is what we're aiming for. The animate in value should be applied for the first 60 frames, gradually increasing length from 0 to 1. After the first 60 frames, the length should stay at 1 holding that value consistently. Then, as we reach the last 60 frames, we'll use the inverted animated out value to smoothly transition the length back from 1 to 0. To set this up, we can use the IIF function, which works like a conditional statement. Here is how it breaks down. Time represents the current frame. If the current frame is less than the frames allocated for the in animation, we'll use the in animation value. Otherwise, we check again, and if the current frame is less than the starting frame of the out animation, we'll use 1 to hold the length at its maximum. Finally, if we're past the starting frame of the out animation, we'll use the out animation value. This logic ensures that the animation grows in, holds steady, and then shrinks down at the right moment. Let's copy and paste this to the length expression. And I think I made a typo somewhere, as the notes have all become red, meaning that there is an error. If I go back to the editor, it indeed looks like I made a typo. Resolve uses the Lua language, and the Lua language is case sensitive. After I fix my typo and recopy and paste it, no more errors. After all this hard work, let's see if everything comes together as planned. And of course it does. The in animation and out animations are working perfectly. Pretty awesome, right? Now I can go back to the edit tab and preview the clip and everything works as expected. I can resize the clip and the in and out animation still play flawlessly as planned at the beginning and at the end of the clip. It's smooth flexible and can be reused very easily in your projects. Here's a quick tip. Once you've got everything set up just the way you want, you can select all the nodes and use the create macro function. I won't dive deep into this topic here, but there are plenty of other videos out there that explain how to use the macro function to create reusable templates for your edit page. 
I've already created a template for my own use and if you'd like to try it out, you can download it. The link is in the description below. Final tip before I go, you can take the animate in and animate out values we created and link them to other controls to drive their animations. For example, I can use the same expression from the length control on the level control to animate the opacity of the lines. The possibilities are endless and maybe the sky could be the limit. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget to smash the like and subscribe button before you go. See you in the next video.